it brings me back to my to my previous life because I am an aeronautical engineering by training and now my school, the School of Aeronautical Engineering in Madrid Polytechnical University, has changed its name. It's called Aeronautical and Space Engineering, which shows how important is the word space, no? But really, I remember also when I was Minister of Transport, Transportation in 19, 1992, quite a long time ago, when Spain launched the first satellite, the telecom satellite, ISPASAT from the La Guayan Francaise with uh, an Ariane. And I remember at that time the opposition was uh, saying that it was a, a waste of money. Why do you want this satellite? It's a waste of money, no? C'est une façon absurde de dépenser de l'argent, ça va servir à rien, no? C'était Ispasat 1992. Things has changed a lot since then. So uh, thank you for inviting me and taking me out of the everyday fight about uh, Libya war, about the nuclear deal with Iran, which is happening in the world, which is a very troublesome world, and have a look at the future, at the future that the space conference represents. I would like to make some observations on, on space policy from a geopolitical point of view, because from the technological point of view, I completely forgot what I learned many years ago, and you know much more than I about it. No? But from the geopolitical point of view, let me say some words. First, space is quite literally the new frontier of global politics. The nouvelle frontière, Kennedy said, now it's really true, the new frontier of global politics. You know, in the foreign world policy, we tend to overuse the term strategic. When we don't know what to say about something, we say it's a strategic issue. And below the word strategic, there are so many things and sometimes nothing more than confusion. But in this case, to use the word strategic is fully justified, as space is really a strategic issue. Space exploration is crucial for our understanding of the universe and has triggered many technological innovations. You know that better than I. Today, satellites and other space-based assets are essential for the functioning of our economy. It is estimated, I don't know how it is estimated, but it is estimated that the global economy depends for 60% directly or indirectly on space-based tools. Space is increasingly a key component of the global security equation. The rising geopolitical tensions that we see on Earth is being extended and projected into space. Let me give some examples to illustrate the increasing geocompetitivity nature of a space. Russia has developed several counter space capability from ground launch anti-satellite missiles to inspection satellites and lasers able to blind satellites or interfere with their communication system. China's military is setting up specialized units and has begun operational training with counter space capability, ground launch anti-satellite missiles, missiles again. India, it was in India last week at the Raisina Dialogue, conducted also an anti-satellite test in March and is setting up a defense space agency that is expected to command all the space assets of India's Army, Navy, and Air Force. You know that the U.S. has created a formal space force as its sixth branch of the U.S. military. And last June, NATO defense ministers adopted a formal space policy in recognition that while space can be used for peaceful purposes, it's also an arena for security competition. And just yesterday, Japanese Prime Minister Abe announced the creation also of a space defense unit Let's remember that in the past, space enabled people, including former enemies, to work together. It's also a place for cooperation on ambitious transformative goals. Just think of the inspiring joint work of the International Space Station. And I think that we need to maintain this collaborative approach in the space. Like life on Earth, 
space is changing its nature. Space is increasingly congested, contested and competitive. The 3G, congested, contested and competitive. What do I mean by that? The space is congested as more and more countries and actors are launching an ever increasing number of civilian and military satellites. Uh, people would not believe that there are around 5,000 satellites in orbit, of which less than 2,000 are operational. And there are 3,000 satellites totally around the Earth doing nothing. This has created a real problem of how to handle the debris. This is aggravated by the trend of launching ever larger constellations with a shorter lifespan. The circular economy, we are talking about our everyday buys, we have also to be implemented in the space. The space is contested. We are seeing unilateral moves and the risk of growing weaponization of arms race in space. This is happening with the legal regime and the normative framework for the space only partially developed and where the principles of peaceful uses of outer space is being eroded. And finally, space is competitive. It's vital for multiple sectors. It becomes a rare resource, not just for sciences and exploration, but also for the digital economy of the fourth industrial revolution and the broad security domain. On this framework, let's talk about Europe. Europe has a massive stake in the future of space. Our future prosperity and security depends on that. Thankfully, Europe, when I say Europe, I mean the European Union, but also the European Union member states and the European Space Agency more particularly, has a solid track record of acting together over many years which have led to concrete successes. Everybody knows Copernicus, the world's larger provider of Earth observation data. Agnus and Galileo are the two components of the EU system providing position navigation and timing services. In December, Galileo reached the milestone of having one billion users, which is a major sign of success. It's very interesting for me to remember when I was in Guyana launching the first telecom satellite of Spain that was going to be useful and a waste of money. One billion users, Galileo is a big success. On security-related matters, the European Union Satellite Center in Torrejón, in Madrid, has helped to deliver key geostrategical intelligence analysis to the EU and member states contributing to monitoring the crisis of conflict areas and supporting the EU advisory operation. When we were planning about what to do in Libya, it immediately comes to our mind that we have a powerful tool of observing what's happening there and guiding the operations on the ground. And I think the future European Defence Fund could offer further support through the permanent structured cooperation PESCO in the field of security, defense, and space. The space is also a catalyst for the development of critical technologies for many strategic sectors, digital, artificial intelligence, intelligence energy, and so. Europe has, has to face the fiercely competition in a global environment. It will strengthen our capacity to act and it will enable us to develop new partnerships and extend Europe, Europe connectivity networks. I think that making these connections between different work strands lies precisely at the heart of my role as High Representative, a Vice President of a Commission who wants to be a geopolitical commission. In fact, what has to be geopolitical is the European Union as a whole, not only the Commission, but the merge of the European Commission and the member states joining its strength, its resources to be present and winning on the global competition. But as High Representative, both of the foreign policy and defence policy, common defence and foreign policy of the European Union, 
I will do my utmost to help to bring about a coherent European Union approach to space. To conclude, space is a strategic issue. Ah, I am going to use the word strategic. At the beginning, I said we were overusing it. Yes, it is. It is a strategic issue. And we need to treat it as such. As European Union, we must be fully aware of what is at stake and act accordingly. I wish you a great conference, and believe me, it has been for me a big pleasure to have the opportunity of participating on the opening session, because here lies the future. You are the actors of the future. You have to deal with uh, everyday problems, but the future is being built by people like you having the chance of working on such an interesting part of the technology, security, defense, geopolitical issue as the satellite and the space future. Really, thank you very much. Thank you for your strong support, Mr. Oberin.